What's up, YouTube? Well, I have got a surprise for you today. We got something different gonna go on, okay? We're gonna try to do it all, and as you know, uh, perhaps this is gonna be a longer episode than I normally do, but we're gonna go to Pits and Grills in Springfield, Missouri. Uh, got to do a visit, so we're gonna mix that in with a lot of live scope active captain videoing. Big fish gonna go in the boat. It is a beautiful February day, bluebird, no wind, and I've got some work to do. Check this out. As you all know, I'm we're about to build a house that's gonna start in March, but I'm doing a fire pit area right here. Check it out. So I've got to get that rock spread around, at least some of it. I'm not gonna kill myself. Um, I'm gonna do some of it and then we're gonna hit the water. And during this going, with all this going on, we're gonna be going to Pits and Grills in Springfield, Missouri. They're a great company. If you like sauces, barbecue, grills, all that stuff, this is totally the episode for you because you're gonna see a lot of stuff at that store. So thanks for watching. Let's get some work done. All right, folks, a lot going into this episode. I'm also gonna be going over my live scope settings talking about lithium batteries and folks just a lot going on so pits and grills you're gonna love that place do me a favor and subscribe really do appreciate it a lot going on in this all episode. right folks we're here at pits and grills my buddy nick is here nick what do you got going there we've got uh, some plot tenders we're gonna put on the uh big green egg here snake river farms gold grade plot tenders so let me grab them this is a uh, really tender muscle in the shoulder of a cow. Tastes like filet, super tender, uh, really delicious. They're a fantastic value if you can find them uh, at your local grocer. But we cook them just like we do steaks. Put them right here on the grill grate on the big green egg. We'll uh, cook them to medium rare and then slice them up. Put a little chimichurri on them and eat them. It doesn't get much better than that, folks. That's the welcome. That do you eat like this every day? Uh, no, this is just because you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's awesome. My wife is going to be super jealous. So, hey, stick with us. We're going to take you around the store, tell you a little bit about Pits and Grills, and uh, eat some fantastic meat, I see. So, thanks, Nick. Man, that's awesome. Absolutely. Dude. Told you folks, this is going to be an awesome episode. Let's talk about live scope and the lithium batteries just to give you an update. Fantastic. After about eight hours of working the lake hard, my lithium battery for my live scope right now is at 14.8 volts. That's just a little bit of an update on that lithium battery. So a lot more coming in terms of lithium batteries on the boat. Look forward to sharing that with you. But uh, I say it's time to get on the water, shall we? That's it. Shovel and rock, that's for the birds. Oh my gosh. But I got a good base down. So I can finish this project maybe when I get back from fishing today. And so let's get in the boat. Let's do some active captain. Let's catch some of these big fish here. <laughs> Let me get my breath. Woo! So before we get started, I want to talk to you guys about my settings. Everybody's getting the new live scope systems and uh, it's important that you at least get a perspective from somebody else. So I've got an 8612. Um, it is technically the, the best processor out there the best picture you're going to get from these Garmin units I've been through them all I really enjoy the 8612 I really did enjoy the 126 SV too so I want you to know that but it is technically it is better let's just put it that way than a 1022 a 1222 but very expensive unfortunately that's the only problem with this unit here so let's go to sonar setup let's talk about it let's go to appearance um, I love the amber now I do leave my color gain on default now a lot of people have taught, said that they need to you need to bring that sucker all the way up to 80. Uh, that gives you more detail. It sees a lot more product. So I'll leave it there. Doesn't bother me one way or the other. I've tried it both ways, and uh, having it up at 80 doesn't seem to affect how I fish or anything like that. So let's go back to sonar setup. Noise reject is set up at high. Our TVG is on low. TVG typically sometimes I'll even turn it off if I really if the fish are really shallow So if I'm fishing maybe Grenada or something like that where the fish are only two feet down and they could be as close as four feet from my boat I'm gonna leave that sucker off, but right now it's set it low 
uh, noise reject, like I said, is on high. So I am always in forward mode. I do not mess with down mode whatsoever. Always looking in forward. And when I do a search, I am always searching and all the way out there at 50, sometimes even 70. That's how I'm gonna search, folks. And then when I get up to a structure, I'm gonna come all the way back and probably fish it around the 30 foot mark. I used to go to 20, but um, you get comfortable at a 30 and that's kind of where I usually will fish. Now I do like to keep my depth uh, very consistent throughout the day. So even if you see it, I'm right now I'm at 40. I usually am around 35 to be honest with you. I'll keep it there even if I get into 16, 17 foot of water. I don't necessarily try to maximize the screen anymore. I like to try to keep the fish marks consistent and that's one way of doing it. So I know what a big fish looks like if I keep it consistent throughout the day. So. We're gonna move around here and we're gonna find some fish. I think I'm gonna to try to do the live scope view like this. And the only reason I'm doing that, folks, is because somebody commented and said, you know, they just have a GoPro right in front of their their their, uh, their screen and that works out really good. So I'm gonna try it on this episode. Rather than doing Active Captain, I'm gonna have this long snaky thing and we're gonna film it right on the old uh, screen and see how you guys like it tell me in the comments below let me know how you feel about it and uh we'll go from there after this i like active captain because it's clean it's crisp it's a little bit more trouble but i think it gets better pictures but we're gonna check this out we're gonna see how it works out all right this is a really good looking pile here far out there we're spooked they're very sensitive right now we got a bluebird day and we got barely any wind so we're gonna have to come in at it from a very far distance, folks. This is what I would do all the time. I'd cast at it at 40 feet. I get it way out there. I'm gonna put my back, kind of stay back. Hopefully that doesn't scare him, but yeah, it's okay. I think I saw it falling in there. There it is. It's in the back, back of the pile. It's very faint. Looks like I got some activity going on around it. I should be right in the center of it now. There's the bite. There he is coming out. You see him? Which we just caught. It's a finicky bite, but this is a okay fish. This is a good eater. A good eater. Right here, coming in at you. So that's a solid, that's about 11 and a half, but that's a fatty. That's a fatty, good fat belly. And uh, you just saw that completely live on, on live scope. So that's exactly what I do. So we're gonna turn back here and do another one. Hopefully you like that footage. It's good stuff right there. Letting them go. End up going over the top of them. So these are gonna be more medium. And these are gonna be medium rare. In that amount of time, I overcooked them while we were talking. <laughs> So Nick, do you do you let those rest then now? What's the what's the plan? Yeah, we'll give them five minutes to rest and kind of redistribute the juices, and then we'll cut them open. All right. So while we got five minutes, can you tell the fine folks about Pits and Grills, how it got started, tell the story behind it? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> so I was a, uh, a dental lab technician. I worked in a local dental lab for 13 years, and. Um, just wanted my own business, wanted to do my own thing. Barbecue was a hobby of mine. I love to cook. I love all aspects of cooking, but especially barbecue. Most of our rub selection back here, rub, sauce, injection, that kind of stuff, is KCBS driven. So the Kansas City Barbecue Society, this is the stuff that's winning, that we know of, that people are using on a daily basis. That's kind of how we limit, um, because there are so many sauces and rubs on the market that we have to narrow it down somehow. So that's kind of how we, we select what we've got here. So that's the sauces and rubs. Um, we've got, you know, all everything from the basic Weber kettle up to their um, their high-end summit, you know, they've got a charcoal summit. They've got uh, some gas grills that, you know, we sell a whole bunch of as well. Um, we've just got all kinds of, of Weber products and Weber, you know, one of the oldest names in the business. Um, we've got some really cool pizza ovens up here that are made in Italy. This guy right here, the Alpha Pizza Oven. We've got some stuff in the way. But this is the creme de la creme when it comes to 
you know, a real wood fired pizza oven in your backyard. These guys, you know, they're, they're top of the line. Then of course we're big green egg dealers also. Big green egg is the leader in the ceramic uh, cooker industry. We've got a whole bunch of, of the green egg products up here. But look at these guys. These guys are, these guys are sitting still. He just barely took that. That's a good fish though. That's a 12. Yeah, maybe 11 and a half, but regardless, that's a good fish. And so another good fish, probably 11, 11, 11 and a half, something like that. But it's a nice fatty and that was fun. So this is not ideal conditions. Let me just, we're gonna let that guy go. Uh, not ideal conditions at all. You've got bluebird day. You've got no wind whatsoever. We're in the middle of the day which is technically probably the worst time to ever fish. Um, but we've got two fish in the boat. Slowing it down is critical. All right, here comes a good pile of fish right here. We're excited about that. Their depth is correct. Everything we like about this group is, is present. So again, they are way out there. So I'm gonna cast it out there as far as I can get it to try to stay away from them. It's an art of getting accuracy. You can see I'm just dropping right on them right now. So I'm 45 feet away and I'm right in it. I can see my bait right now. I can't do it any better than that. If they don't bite, then there's a real good chance they're just not active. Look at that, nothing. Maybe had one guy that followed me out. When I see that, I might change baits. I don't know how well you guys are seeing that. We might do a little active captive just to be safe. Look at this. They're a little deeper than I like to see them, but at the end of the day, that's, that's pretty good. Those baits are coming in right there. You can see it come falling in. I got that thing stretched all the way out to 60. That's why the picture is just not gonna be perfect. You just have to learn to read it, and that's time on the water. Here we go. Do I have any takers? I don't think I could do it any better than that. Here comes a taker, I think, from behind. No? Man, that's frustrating. watch at the end of the pile That's a good fish right there. Look at this. This is a big fish of the day. This is only our third fish, but that's a 12 and a half. That's a good fish. All right, so Nick just finished lunch and it looks fantastic. Check it out here. Tell them a little bit about what you serve, or what you've prepared and what's the actual topping on the meat. Sure. So these are Snake River Farms, clawed tenders, also known as Terrace Major. Um, it's a super tender muscle in the shoulder of the cow. We made a chimichurri sauce, a little parsley, garlic, red pepper, um, vinegar, and oil, and then uh, just some little potatoes to go with it. All right, so here's the test right here. Mm. That's good. <laughs> Oh, 
I like it with the sauce. I really think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for having me here. Oh yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming. Tell the fine folks now. How do you get a hold of Pits and Grills? Where are they going to go? On um, Facebook, you know, Pits and Grills on Facebook. Um, give us a call 417-501-8737 or pitsandgrills.com. And something I promise I'm going to do is I'm going to report back on those <laughs> spices that you gave me, mm -hmm. so that everybody can know a little bit more about each one. So in particular. This guy right here, the hard knocks, and then the ones that he just gave me today. So looking forward to showing you guys. The cod tenders that we had today, we uh, used the hard knocks bold beef. Ah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. So thanks, brother. Anytime. All right. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. Partnered up with these fantastic companies. So check that out. That's a good pile of fish. you know 40 feet out i'm going slow i'm not <laughs> on a day like today you have to go so slow to have any chance and you have to be casting from a distance see my bait falling down in there hold on right there i can barely pick it up there it is i'm letting that bait get in there and now i'm starting to slow roll it i'm trying to keep my weight above the pile so i can keep an eye on it i am right in the heart of that sucker Try not to spook the fish by bumping into too many of them. See if we got any takers. Here he comes somebody from the bottom. Two of them. Nothing. Alright, so let's let's just mess with this a little bit. Let's get a let's get a hair jig.